I've prepped her natural hair by round brushing it dry and flat ironing it. I pulled out three colors, but I'm only gonna use this brown and this very dark brown, not the light blonde. That's gonna be my anchor to sew the hair to. I generally start by leaving a border of hair around the edges that I will actually braid up just to get out of the way of the braids that I'm going to anchor the extensions to. So this border around the edges is to hide the extensions. Her hair is so mega thick. She's of Hispanic descent and her hair grows so thick that I don't really need to make a large border around her edges. Some people's hair is very thin and I end up having to leave a larger border around the edges. But in this case, I can leave a lot less and braid up most of her natural hair, which when wet is very wavy. And so the extensions are straight. So I wanna take out as much of her natural hair out of the equation as possible. For those of you that are concerned about wearing braids as an extension, the first extensions were all done with braids. And it wasn't until people who could not braid had to figure out what other type of extensions can we make. And so through the history of hair extensions, we've come a long way for those who could not braid. But if you're concerned about if my braids are tight or uh, if it's going to take your hair out, let me uh, first say that I braid for also children. Okay, now I'm gonna braid up your natural hair around the edges as a border uh, to, for the hair extension but I'm gonna take this out once I uh, make a braid that I'm gonna sew the hair to. This lady doesn't have a problem getting a braid uh, from me. Uh, my braids are not so tight that it hurts. It's also not pulling on the skin and stretching the skin. Also, she is not going to lose hair because of these braids. Now, daily, we lose strands of hair. Because the hair is braided, you will not see that loss um, that you normally would see with combing, brushing, blow drying the hair on a daily basis. So expect that when these braids are taken down, there is going to be some shedding of hair. The hair that normally would have come out on a day-to-day -day basis, but being trapped in the braids, you won't see that uh, breakage. And it's not breakage, it's normal hair loss that takes place every day but because your hair was in braids, you don't see that loss until you're taking those braids down. So don't be alarmed that you see a wad of hair. That's hair you would have lost in the first place. Hair that has been lost due to a braid uh, leaves the scalp with a clean surface where it has been plucked out. My braids are not so tight that it's plucking your hair out but again expect shedding when the hair is taken down that's not abnormal 
Not everyone with straight hair needs these, this much hair braided up. Because at the end of this video, you'll see that most of her hair is braided up. Some people just need maybe three to four, sometimes only six tracks. But in this case, on this person's head, I put, I think, about 12 tracks. Uh, she put a color in her hair and a bleach and she did some self work on her own and it caused her to get some breakage um, because of the overlapping of maybe bleach so that's why you see a lot of short hair around the sides and then the longer hair is like in the middle on the top All of my braids with a synthetic hair or Kanakalon hair braided in as a anchor are going to be very thin and close together without using a knit. I want her to be able to wash her hair and get down to her scalp with her fingertips without struggling through a net. When a net is used, a customer cannot get to the scalp. And I believe that that leads to scalp fungus because the skin is not sloughing as it's supposed to with normal washing. And before you know it, you have an issue on your scalp requiring a special type of wash. So I do not use netting for this purpose. Originally, many years ago when netting was introduced to hair extensions and the hair extension industry, it was for making a base to actually sew hair to when there was no hair present. Just a very thin strip of hair to anchor. Very thin strip. And instead of holding it in the middle, I'm going to crisscross it at the end. very careful to be very gentle with this process of braiding on any type of hair. If a person is very tender headed, they can handle getting their hair braided by me because I have a very soft way of braiding that also leaves the braid very firm and attached to the scalp without pain. My goal with each layer of braiding is not to braid those to the very end on this hair type. I'm only going to braid a little bit from the scalp and then anchor that off with the synthetic hair. Sewing that down so the ends of her natural hair will be integrated with the extension hair. Each braid will end at a different place so that the ends of her natural hair will be integrated with the extension hair at different places, not all at the same place. I want to have a natural effect, a natural blend of her natural hair that's left out of the braids with the extension hair. This is not a style that she should attempt to take out herself. She should expect to come back to me and allow me to take my own workout. 
I'm not going to use scissors. I'm going to use another tool to take this hair out. Other stylists don't know my method as I know my methods. And if they try to take my workout with the wrong tools, they will have a hard time not cutting her hair. But I know exactly what I did to put this style together. And I know exactly how to get it out without any breakage. Some people have a concern about whether or not braided in extensions or sewn in extensions, if they feel natural or not. If the braids are as small as I can make them. Yes, they feel natural. You can swipe your hair from the forehead all the way down to the um, nape of the neck and it feels natural. But sometimes people will do much larger braids and this may not feel quite as natural. My braiding for this particular type of extension has always been very tiny. You can expect only my best work every time. It's also important for me to note in this video that I give my best work every time. The appointment uh, booking system might say four or five or six hours, but it could take longer than that. So I strongly suggest that you don't make plans after your hair extensions. This is the first step in sewing the hair down or sewing the braids down for the extensions. And this is the only thread that I will use. The thread comes in several different colors, including platinum blonde. Because her hair is so thick, her braids appear to look thicker rather than thinner but sewing them will refine everything down to a small, even smaller braid. Different textures of hair will appear to be much thinner than her hair because remember, uh, her hair is very dense and very thick. Not everyone has hair as thick as hers. Now don't forget the first braid around the edge is not a braid that I'm sewing anything to. That braid will be taken apart to add in with her hair extensions. She originally came in expecting to get a micro bead attached to her, the base of her scalp in different locations so that I could sew the hair to those micro, micro beaded anchors. I just so happened I did not have those beads and we didn't communicate well over the phone. We only had a few text messages. Um, typically, if someone is going to expect to use micro beads or micro links, we're going to have a discussion about the colors of those beads because I may have to order them. But typically, I believe that a sew-in extension weave lasts longer and is safer on the hair. Because in this particular lady's hair, I could see a few plugs of hair missing where she 
I believe she pulled that hair out trying to get it out. She pulled those links, those beads out trying to get the extensions out. And um, I don't think that's so healthy. Now on her, it's not a big deal because she has so much hair. But on someone with much thinner hair, the last thing they want to do is pull anything out of their hair like the beads from the extensions. Typically when working with new clients, I prefer either a face-to-face -face consultation or a Zoom consultation. That gives me an opportunity to really discuss the ins and out about their hair and the type of extensions that I offer. I do most or all different types of hair extensions. But I'd like to dis have a, d a discussion about what it is we are going to do. So I've sewn down those little pieces at the end and this is gonna integrate into her extension style. This won't be so noticeable, but the hair that's in here that's synthetic, I'm gonna use a flat iron to melt it so I can see the difference to get it out of there. And then this natural hair will come down over the extensions. Mm -hmm.